Hello, um, my name is Trey Ventor. Uh, thanks very much to Educating North Dance for hosting me and this wonderful day of events. Um, and I'm quite, quite grateful to be part of it today. I'm here to talk to you about this term, decolonizing the curriculum against diversifying the curriculum. So before we begin, I want to draw your eyes to this slide full of terms and references, um, which will be which will which we will be uh, talking about some of these um, today, um, and you can Google search them properly uh, in in your own time and, and do your own research on the on these terms. So in order to understand uh, decolonial thought, you have to understand um, colonialism. So at its bone, colonialism in the context I'm talking about today was the seizure of resources from those indigenous to the global south. And when I say global south, I mean predominantly um, countries uh, that were uh, that were that we now call developing nations. Essentially, countries that are mostly now members of the Commonwealth, but not all of them, formerly colonised by uh, European nations. And through this colonization, colonization, Western knowledge was embedded into the global society and theft was not just that of land, but also of intellect, also intellectual theft of languages and whatnot. One of the most important words, I think you as teachers, educators, um, and generally anyone who is interested in this subject is epistemology, the study of knowledge. And in the context of colonialism, epistemic violence, um, in essence, was knowledge based violence. You could argue that it was knowledge based genocide. So this would so this would be things like the erasure of African history and as educators analyzing the reasons why. So through knowledge production, this was used to dominate peoples in the global south and knowledge was one of the ways oppressed the oppressor oppressed the oppressed. One way was through the Western knowledge canons of art, including including um, literature. Um, in the post-colonial context, Edward Said called this Orientalism. Today, we can see this in films and television, uh, and this has gone on to include, um, it's gone past Said's ideas of just North Africa, Asia and the Middle East to also include Sub-Saharan Africa and also um, the West Indies. So, looking at uh, pushes to decolonize the curriculum, especially amongst student activists and, un and universities, um, student unions and universities should be doing everything they can um, to decolonize. However, that's easier said than done, and both at times have been seen to be giving lip service to change. Yet we must also consider that whilst that what de what decolonization actually means. So often decolonial thought and diversity get lumped together and they're not the same at all. We must also look at how decolonial thought is different to other forms of anti-racist organizing, because not all anti-racist organize anti-racist organizing forms itself around the positionality of, in particular, colonialism and empire. Decolonial thought centers race, colonialism and empire as key components in shaping the world we live in today. Secondly, it promotes alternative ways of thinking. Um, epistemology is the study of knowledge and decolon decolonial thought tells us that within academia, there is an accepted idea of what knowledge is and what knowledge isn't. So once you look at colonialism as something greater than the physical, but also a colonization of the mind, it shows how decolonial thought is very different to diversity work, and we must also decolonize ourselves. Decolonization has a history behind it that goes way, that goes back decades and is rooted in independent struggles um, ending in 1945 with the Pan-African Congress, where African leaders, activists and colleagues were in the fifth meeting to talk about the decolonization of the African continent from its imperial, um, from imperial powers, essentially demanding an end to colonial rule um, and, the, and racial subjugation. So if, if, decolon if decolonizing the curriculum was just about diversity, it would make it a lot easier, but it's not. Epistemicide is a very is a very real thing, and we can see it happening still today. Uh, one such example being in how knowledge is, gets presented, what counts as knowledge, um, the essay, the journal article, and so forth. Um, very much a language deep rooted in whiteness. It's about how we produce produce knowledge and present it as much as the as not as much as the knowledge itself. Better yet, how we critique it. 
So my background in English creative writing, and I saw how epistemic violence presented in English literature, um, how colonial um, writers perpetuated an image of Africans, consistent with uh, modern definitions of racism, uh, very much complicit in reproducing damaging messages about the cultures linked to the various but to the various ones um, in those indigenous to the global south. Decolonial thought on English and creative writing um, is about positionality of those authors and how and how stories are being told. It's also about showing alternative forms of knowledge to the Eurocentric, especially from academics, revolutionaries and thinkers who are not white and or from Europe. So in decolonizing, we are not erasing history, but we are putting back the dignity that was taken. And we must look at things like BAME as well, because when we think about decolonial thought, we must also consider language. It's, study, it's fundamentally studying a system that is white supremacist in its design and pulling it apart. And this goes way beyond curriculum with our critiques of white supremacy in the curriculum, censoring race, empire and colonialism at the nucleus. So, however, in discourses about decolonial thought, we are challenging whiteness. Every time you ask questions in this nature, you are challenging the power structures at, um, in society, um, in this case, the education system. So, so in this, I know that the, the university as a concept was built off the backs of enslavement, land dispossession and colonial plunder. They were not designed to accommodate people of colour. So now I see people of colour with a university education working in, or working in universities in academic spaces as ethnographers of higher education. I would say the same thing about uh, people of colour as teachers in schools, um, also people of colour in schools in non-teaching roles as well, um, and in FE colleges. They're also ethnographers of education. The racism that came out of colonialism Pertinently, anti-blackness and the history that goes that gives scope to it has a lot to answer for. And because of colonialism, I'm here to speak you to speak to you today. That my grandparents came to this country in the late 50s and early 60s as children slash teenagers as part of that Windrush generation. My grandparents were born in colonial Jamaica and Grenada, in what was the British what in what was the colonial British West Indies of the 1940s and 1950s. Uh, Grenada was not made independent of British rule until 1974, and the same with Jamaica in 62. When we think about colonialism, that is not ancient history at all. Additionally, you will find many students that have stories about family members like mine, and they may also speak of a hyphenated identity. And for many of us, this is what Du Bois called a double consciousness, um, that we exist between the hyphen or, or on the hyphen. So you could be you could be as British, you could be British and Caribbean, but not not, not really one or the other, that you 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 feel you feel that you're you're both. So here we begin to see how decolonial thought goes way deeper than diversity. That whilst diversity may bring more people outside of neutral spaces of whiteness and or maleness, for example, or straightness into uh, onto our reading lists. It does not ad address the deep rooted violences that exists in the very in the valuations of knowledge in the education system. And this is what Kavita Bernot has to say about diversity. So you can you can you can pause that at, at your pleasure. So I leave you here now. Think about knowledge and knowledge based violence, epistemology, epistemic violence, epistemicide. Look at your lesson plans. Can you make changes? <clears throat> Think about whose voice, whose points of view are being centred, whose voices are being uh, given more scope than others. And ask yourself if your school, college or university is conflating diversity with decolonial thought. And if they are, what can you do about it? Here is a brief reading list. There are many more texts on race, empire and de decoloniality that uh, you can you can find, but this is a brief list and some good introductions to some to race and empire in these in, in these books. Um, my name is Trey Ventor, um, and thank you for listening.